There's nothing more satisfying than when a player talks trash and fulfills their own prophecy by doing exactly what they said they would. Maybe a game winner, a clutch moment, the occasional poster that has the opposition questioning their existence. But what about when a player talks smack and it completely backfires in the most humiliating way imaginable? Well, this is one of the ultimate sins in all of basketball. Thou shall not talketh the talk if thou cannot walketh the walk. This is treacherous territory. Luckily, for our entertainment, when it comes to the NBA, these moments are captured for the entire world to see. Like last season, when Damian Lillard had some interesting, but eventually regretful words for Stephen Curry. After losing Kevin Durant and with Klay Thompson out for the season, most fans knew the Warriors were not going to look the same as they did throughout their super team era. This realization became clear just two games into the season, when the Warriors lost to the Nets by 26, and then two days later lost to the Bucks by 39. Throughout that entire first week of the season, Stephen Curry was struggling without his star teammates, shooting worse than he ever had in his entire career. And in just their fifth game of the season, the Warriors faced off against the Portland Trail Blazers. And once again, the Warriors' struggles would continue as they would go on to lose that game in a 25-point blowout. Dame had 34 points, Steph with 26. Now, Damian Lillard, who has spent all of his days in the NBA carrying his team, believed that Steph's struggles boiled down to one simple fact. It's tough to get those quality looks right now. You know, it's, it's different than what it's looked like, you know, over the last four or five years for him. So um, he's trying to get quality looks and get a clean look so he can make a good one. You know, it, it's, you don't really have that luxury to just like take one from, from that deep, you know, just to be taking it. At the time, Dame's statements were very true. With Steph virtually running a one-man offense, all they have to do is just keep him from getting his normal shots and throw him out of rhythm. And just two days later, the Warriors faced the Blazers again. And Damian Lillard's theory was put to the test. Eric Jones Jr. acquired from Miami as a free agent, hounding Curry on the... They're going to make noise in the West. Curry around Covington, past Nurkic. The same five starters. And three throw in the three-point play. Curry right down the line. Good screen by Bazemore. Three on the way. Def cut back door. Little float. He reloaded, went around. It's a pass to it's a pa the year. Curry for... Th Curry little floater. Steph, Ooh. step back three. Yes. Yeah. Ricochet to Steph. He just catches his man. Little leaner push shot. Curry from Stop. deep. 59. <laughs> Draymond he finds him another it. three. Oh. Got it. 62. <laughs> 62. I think it's safe to say that Lillard was just a bit off in his assessment. Just two days after his comments on Curry, Steph put up a career-high 62 points on Damian Lillard and the Blazers. 62 points, summoning his inner and I took that personally demon and wreaking havoc on the Blazers. It is crazy how just a few critical words can inspire a player to shred an entire defense like this. But Steph's rampage on Dame did not stop there. Because during that entire season, Steph's averages against the Blazers were 41 points, 7 assists, and 5 rebounds a game. That's what he averaged against the Blazers for an entire season. These are prime Wilt Chamberlain numbers. This is sick. All because Dame said he wouldn't get the same shots as he used to. That's not even disrespectful, that's just an opinion. It's too bad Steph didn't see it that way. Because pulling off something like this takes a lot of skill. And skill can be a difficult thing to acquire. But don't worry, my friends, because Skillshare is here to help. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to learn and master new skills. Skillshare offers thousands of topics and classes ranging from design to photography, video, illustration, music, and many more, all while fitting within your schedule and skill level. Want to learn how to write, edit, and create YouTube videos like this one? Look no further than Marquise Brownlee's class on YouTube success, where he gives an in-depth, step-by-step guide on how to write shoot, and edit videos. Whether you're a beginner taking your first steps into a new passion or a master of your craft sharpening your skills, Skillshare has resources and classes fit for everyone. And for a limited time, Skillshare is offering a one month free trial. Free, my favorite price. But this offer is only available to the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description below. So join Skillshare today and take advantage of this limited time offer. Huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Click on the link in the description below and learn, grow, and master your skills today. 
Now, players getting ahead of themselves and biting off more than they can chew happens a little too often in a league full of stars. Like last season when Kyrie Irving spoke about the addition of Kevin Durant to the Nets lineup, saying that for the first time in his career, he finally has a teammate that can hit clutch shots like he can. 10 seconds left, one point game, who's shooting? You, you were Kyrie, KD? Depends on who's hot. I don't see it as, that, as anything other than that. Like, one three pick and roll or it's an ISO for either one of us or it's something great for our, our team. I'm, one thing I'm, I've always been comfortable with is, you know, I felt like I was the best option on every team I played for, you know, down the stretch. This is the first time in my career where I could look down and be like, that motherfucker can make that shot too. <laughs> Now there's no denying that Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are some of the most clutch and capable shooters of all time. But uh, Kyrie used to play with this other guy in Cleveland and he was pretty good in the clutch too. Final five seconds, going to work. LeBron James, hooks, got it, he did it! Into the yeah. front court. Here's LeBron. James, yeah. he catch, off. fire, ball game! Rebound, Thompson, back to LeBron. Fakes the three, then shoots it in! James for the win. It's gone. LeBron James at the buzzer stuns the Chicago Bulls. But hey, at least Kyrie got the clutch teammate he always wanted. Durant will have a chance here. His jumper won't go. That's it. Brooklyn trying to stay unbeaten. Durant. Hits the deck, lost it loose. Harris to inbounds. Durant doesn't get it off in time, and the Wizards are going to win. Back on Irving. And now Bam switches onto him. The three up in the air. Drug. Kind of deny Durant. Durant gets free. Puts up the three pointer. Short, no good. Ball game. Here's Kyrie with a deep, deep three. And uh, the out to Durant. Durant, one dribble, fires it up. Oh, back of the rim. Durant for three. Comes up with an air ball. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying these two aren't clutch, but uh, you cannot start the season saying you finally have a clutch teammate that can make shots like you can, then go on to miss several crucial clutch shots during the season, then end your season on a missed game winner. You just can't do that. Otherwise, some wise-ass YouTuber will make a video about it. Which I guess is still better than the infamous 3-1 blown lead by the Golden State Warriors in 2016. A fate that no player wants to be a part of, especially Joel Embiid, since he had this to say in a post-game interview during the 2019 playoffs. Um, but both of you, just how important was it to get this win? Because you did play a lot of minutes, you weren't sure right up until tip whether you were going to play. Uh, it was really important because we wanted to get this one and go home and try to finish it. Uh, so it feels good to be up 3-1, so uh, we definitely don't want to be in a situation uh, like the Warriors two years ago. <laughs> and beating the Sixers eventually closed out their series against the Nets in five games a few days later. So mission accomplished, no blown lead. Well, at least not yet. Their next opponents were the Raptors in the second round, and by the end of game three, the Sixers had a 2-1 series lead. Their last win, a massive 21-point blowout. I'm sure you can guess what happens next. Yeah, time's gonna run out though on the 76ers as the Raptors come back. A Toronto route to take a three games to two lead in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? No! Beam! We definitely don't want to be in a situation uh, like the Warriors two years ago. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Now, when it comes to basketball, I'm not sure which is worse, missing a game winner or getting a game winner scored on you. I've had my fair share of both of these happening to me. And for a split second, if you listen closely, you can hear the whole world laughing at you. Paul George is familiar with this feeling since he has been on the receiving end of more game-winning shots than anyone in NBA history. 
Right now he goes around. He's going to shoot to tie the game. Bruh. Got it! Kobe. Three on its way. Bruh. Got it! Oh. Bruh. Oh! Bruh. oh! gets it in. Here's James on the drive. Bruh. With four, with three, leans in. Bruh. Oh, it looked like he got fouled. This look, look, look. They get it to Powell. Locks. Game time. Game time. Kawhi for the win. Bruh. Oh, mama. Money away. Nico a screen. Jimmy's open. He hangs. Bruh. He fires. He scores. Oh, they Zeller. wanted to switch. Here is Walker. Yeah, he wanted to switch. Bruh. They got it. Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay for the win. Bruh. Rudy Gay cans it. If there's any children watching this, I apologize. I know that was some graphic footage, but we need context here. This man has a mixtape of game winners getting scored on him, and it's nearly 11 minutes long. But of all the game winners hit on Paul George, one stands above the rest. The 37-foot dagger Damian Lillard hit on him to send the Thunder packing in the first round of the playoffs two seasons ago. This was one of the greatest game winners in NBA playoff history. But in the infamous words of Paul George, this was a bad shot. When you defended it about as well as you can, at some point you gotta let a guy shoot that, don't you, and just live with the results? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a bad shot. Um, I care what anybody says, that's a bad shot. Uh, but, hey, he made it. That story won't be told that it was a bad shot. Um, we live with that. Now, although PG's comments were a bit out of pocket, he's not necessarily wrong. He was playing good defense and Dame just happened to hit a crazy shot. But it's not like this is the first time this has happened. I mean, second time. I mean, third. I mean, fourth. I mean, fifth. I mean, sixth. I mean, seventh. I mean, eighth. I mean, ninth. I mean, tenth. I mean, eleventh time this has happened. But I'm sure it won't happen again. How many more game winners can a man take? Care what anybody says. That's a bad shot. Both in the penalty. Under two to play. Hard step back. Puts up the three. Got hit. Shots good. That's a bad shot. Um, and the Suns have it. Six to play. Booker. This is for the win. Got it. Care what anybody says. That's a bad shot. In his bag. Deep. Like the fries are at the bottom. That's a bad shot, uh, but hey, he made it. That story won't be told. It was a bad shot. Live with that.